All right, guys, today I'm talking to you <laughs> outside of an abandoned mall in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, typically, I wouldn't find myself here, but as you might have guessed, uh, I'm here to pick up a game. Uh, <laughs> sometimes when you find a great deal, you just got to hop in the car and go, and this is one of those opportunities. Uh, definitely something a bit strange. Again, not something I was looking for, something a bit off the, the beaten path. Uh, definitely an interesting game. We'll talk more about it once I grab it, but uh, why don't I... <laughs> Uh, this is going to maybe be a little bit creepy, a little bit uh, weird, but uh, I'll keep my fingers crossed. Let me head on inside and uh, see what we get. Overtime! Okay, and here we are out back of this... Uh, around the back of this abandoned mall and uh, definitely a bit sketchy but we made the pickup and here it is right here uh, i don't know if you can tell what this is uh, but it's actually an atari kangaroo but uh, it's not just any atari kangaroo because this is not the typical kangaroo cabinet in fact this is an irish cabinet so this this kangaroo was made by atari in ireland and if you come around back here and look at the manufacturing sticker, you see that it says Atari Ireland, Limit uh, Atari Ireland Limited from Tipperary Town in Ireland. So yeah, this uh, was built in Europe, in Ireland by Atari for the European market, and must have been re-imported back to the United States. I've actually heard about that a lot. Uh, I'm here in Ohio, like I said, and uh, I know a lot of these Irish cabs made their way to Canada and then were sort of I guess re-imported or kind of just imported because they were never in the US in the first place into the US and a lot of them Made their way to Ohio and I tend to get a lot of great deals in Ohio. It's a bit of the promised land um, So yeah, definitely a, a restoration project here. It's not working. Uh, the game board's missing um, But I got a great deal saw this on Craigslist. It was listed for quite a while and uh, I was passing through the area So I figured why the heck not? Um, and for the, uh, for the deal press that I made with the seller, he threw in an extra monitor. I think it's a K7000. We'll have to take a look and see what this is. It's got some Xevious burn. So obviously this did not spend its entire life uh, inside of the, the kangaroo. But uh, yeah, why don't we uh, come around to the back and uh, take a look at what's going on inside this thing. Whoops. All right, let me... Uh, it is drizzling a little bit and it's supposed to be high winds and rain on the way home. So I definitely have to get this bundled up nice. Let me go grab a screwdriver and we'll dig into this thing. All right, so it's got the back door, uh, but the lock's not holding it in place. It's just this one screw right here that we'll pull out. And we'll see what's going on. All right, a lot of stuff here. So what do we got? We have a monitor. Let's see if I can figure out what this is. Ooh, this is interesting. What kind of monitor is this? These two boards here, if you're seeing what I'm looking at, I'm not super familiar with. Interesting. We'll have to figure out what this is. This is a chassis NMX L21G. It's a TM202G. So is this a Matsushita? Not exactly uh, the favorite monitor of arcade collectors. Um, but down below, we do have the cardboard bezel. We've got the transformer block down there. We've got the AR2 power supply. Uh, game board is missing, but I actually have one uh, that I picked up recently for next to nothing untested. And we've got some odds and ends down here in the cabinet. So what I'm gonna do is pull a lot of this uh, random stuff out. I'm actually gonna pull the monitor and have it ride in the bed of the truck, or in the, uh, the cab of the truck and then we'll get this wrapped and loaded onto my pickup. All right, I'm over here by the front, trying to get the monitor out. And uh, the coin door actually wasn't bolted on the hinges, just sort of fell right off. It says uh, Namco Arcade. I think this mall's been closed for a while. I think the guy told me only six months, but it looks like much longer. Uh, so, and it, they said that this arcade was here for about 10 years, so get this monitor out of here. And the bolts are just on hand tight. And so always be careful of that sort of stuff when you're moving a monitor. Don't assume that it's in, you're moving a game, don't assume that the monitor's in there securely. It could just be, uh, you know, just sitting in there. 
And if the game's gonna ride on its back, you don't want to lose the, have the monitor fall inside and get necked or smash things up or whatever. All right, we've got the monitor loaded into the cab of the truck. We've got, I took the cardboard bezel and uh, what else? Um, the back door, just cause it's particle board and I don't want it soaking up moisture cause it's drizzling a little bit right now. I'm just grabbing odds and ends out of the bottom of the cabinet just so those bolts and whatever aren't loose and flying around washers, whatever. You just don't want those things to go where they don't belong. I think I'll leave the AR2 in there. That should be all right. Um, Cause yeah, expecting lots of rain and actually high winds uh, on the ride home. And believe it or not, I'm gonna, I'm crazy. I'm gonna pick up another game tomorrow. So this thing is gonna stay overnight in the, in the bed of my truck uh, in the rain. So we're gonna have to wrap this up good. So if you wanna take a quick look at what's going on in here, Transformer assembly, uh, AR2, yeah. So uh, I think we're in good shape. Got a little bit of work to do, but not too bad. I don't know what Walton is right there. And if you can see over here, uh, it says National Trail Campground on uh, in the inside of the back door. So uh, yeah, I know the National Trail is, what is that, Route 40? It kind of goes you know, east to west or west to east across the US. Um, actually, I think I was on that road uh, coming out here, but uh, yeah, let me get this wrapped up, loaded on the truck and we'll uh, hit the road. All right, we're all wrapped up. Uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. Uh, if you saw, I put a couple more things uh, in the truck like the uh, uh, speaker panel and um, the joystick. The joystick is here, the shaft is here, but it's missing the uh, retaining clip, the E clip or C clip or whatever it is. So I pulled that right out for safekeeping. And yeah, this thing's uh, missing the, on these Irish cabs, the bezel and marquee were all one piece. Uh, I don't know if you can still see the, the light, fluorescent light right there. So it was all one piece of glass, uh, the bezel and marquee together. So I'm gonna have to track one of those down. I know they don't reproduce them. Uh, if you've got a lead on one, uh, a, a marquee bezel for a uh, Irish kangaroo, please let me know. But uh, yeah, let's uh, get this loaded on the truck and uh, head out of town. Okay, now we're all loaded up and ready to go. I got the two monitors in the cab of the truck and the game on its back in the bed. Uh, as you saw, I wrapped it in that shrink wrap uh, and then I sort of completely surrounded it with this super heavy duty uh, thick tarp, strapped it all down uh, with, you know, uh, ratchet straps. There's another one there you can't see. Uh, and then I, I used another, um, another tarp to sort of go all over it, uh, hopefully cover up some of the cardboard that's up there. I know some of this cardboard is just gonna disintegrate, but we'll deal with that when we get home. Um, but I won't be going home until tomorrow. I'm staying overnight. Uh, I got other stuff going on in town. Just double checking this. Um, so uh, we're gonna load, we're gonna pick up a second game tomorrow. I don't know if I'll show it in this video or the next one, um, but even though I've got just the one laying down on its back, we're gonna have to stand it up uh, to, get the, to get two uh, cabs in the bed of my truck and hopefully the, the high winds don't give me any any troubles fingers crossed So yeah, I think we're gonna keep this you know, even though we're expecting torrential downpours even overnight and into tomorrow uh, Hopefully this cab stays uh, nice and dry and uh, Yeah, we'll be in good shape tomorrow to uh, pick up uh, pick up another one. So <laughs> wish me luck and I'll uh, see you in a bit
All right, here we are. This uh, Irish kangaroo cabinet is off the truck and safe and sound at home in the garage. Uh, it's actually been about, man, five months uh, since I picked this thing up and it's just been hanging out here in the garage uh, waiting for me to do a pickup video. That's how far backed up I am uh, on, this, on these things. But yeah, we can uh, come take a closer look sort of starting from the top. We've got this uh, kind of wraparound uh, speaker grill thing here. Uh, I don't have the correct bolts <laughs> for it, so these uh, carriage bolts are just kind of holding it in there uh, for now. Uh, coming down along the sides, uh, some of the wood grain vinyl uh, is starting to peel, and maybe has been uh, for a while, so we're gonna have to maybe glue that back down and color in the, the exposed uh, particle board there. This uh, T-molding is like sticky all the way around, and <laughs> I don't know if it was, you know, heat related or, or moisture related or what being in a humid environment, but uh, the cabinet doesn't really look like it's seen a ton of water for the most part. Um, but yeah, it's all, it's all sticky. So we'll be, I don't know, should I try cleaning it? Can I do that? Uh, I mean, I'll just have to replace that T-molding. Uh, obviously the biggest thing here is we are missing that a uh, combo piece of glass that's both the marquee at the top and the bezel down below with those Irish cabs that Atari made in Tipperary. It's just sort of one piece of, of glass. Uh, I'm also missing, uh, I looked at the, in the manual, it's called a baffle. There's sort of a, a board here supposed to kind of keep the, uh, the marquee light from shining down and illuminating the back of the bezel part of that glass and only illuminating uh, the marquee part, so I'll have to get you know some some piece of uh, material to kind of uh, fill in this gap and block that off. I don't believe this is the correct cardboard bezel. Uh, it looks like originally it was stapled. Uh, there was a much larger one that was stapled uh, just inside uh, where the uh, the glass would go. I'm guessing this is you know this was added later. This is just a thin cardboard uh, bezel, and I'm not sure it even really matches. Uh, you can kind of see the Xevious burn on this uh, Matsushita uh, monitor. It must have had a sticker on it at some point. So probably an indication that it was bad and then they ripped off the sticker that said it was bad. So we'll have to uh, rebuild that or replace it. Coming down to the control panel. Uh, the control panel overlay really is in decent shape. It needs to be cleaned, but it's okay. And I'm hoping I can kind of rebuild the, uh, the joystick with the, uh, the shaft and ball top that's uh, inside the cabinet uh, down below here. Oh, and the, let me grab a, a flashlight so you can see what I'm looking at here. Uh, there's actually two coin counters right there. Uh, and one is like covered with electrical tape. I don't know if I can, yeah, remove it. Um, but uh, look at that. So let's see what this, uh, what this says here. The one on the right says 16,765. And the one on the left says... 146, so we'll ask Professor Pac-Man to do that math for us. Uh, then on the right we have the test switch, uh, credit switch, and a volume control knob. And down below here we're missing the uh, the coin uh, bucket, but we do have this <laughs> the uh, uh, coin upper coin door. And again, um, I don't believe these are the original. This is the original setup. It's got the Stickers here for uh, Namco Arcade. <laughs> Obviously, when this game came out in 1982, there was no World Wide Web. So yeah, that sticker is definitely uh, an anachronism. And uh, I'm pretty sure those uh, coin return buttons aren't correct. But hey, uh, we'll use it. So uh, and on the back side, it doesn't have the coin mechs or anything. But um, yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be good enough. Okay, I'll stick that in there. And uh, we'll look at the other side of the cabinet. This is probably the nicer side. Uh, they repaired a little bit, a previous owner repaired a little bit of the uh, peeling uh, wood grain vinyl, but really not bad at all. Uh, coming around to the top, it says Walton here. You probably saw this when I was loading up the cabinet to uh, put it in the truck. And um, not entirely sure what that's all about, but maybe a previous owner operator. Uh, here's a close up of that sticker again. And uh, if you can't make it out, the model is EKGR which I'm assuming means like European KGR, has a uh, serial number of 118186. Uh, and it does say that it was originally uh, rated for 230 volts. So we'll make sure that it's been uh, modified for US voltage. 
got a uh, warning sticker in uh, English, French, and German, I'm assuming. And uh, yeah, back of the cabinet, a little slot there for the power cord. Uh, that's the power switch, I believe, and uh, a couple of caster wheels on there to help uh, move it around. So why don't we get set up on the tripod, and then I'll spin the, whoa, I'll spin the cabinet around, and we can dig in. Uh, we'll open up the back and dig into it. All right. Uh, and like I said, I do have a untested, whoa, untested, uh, whoa, kangaroo PCB. But I have no earthly idea if it works or not. Um, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. I'll show it to you right over here. Got this uh, from a CLAV member, uh, uh, a CLAV forum member. Can't quite remember his name off the top of my head. I think it was maybe Steve. Um, a good Steven, not a bad Steven. Yeah, it's a two board stack. It says Sun Electronics Corp uh, right on it. And uh, it's got a Atari style uh, serial number. This one says upright. 04796. So, uh, yeah, but like I said, it looks like it's in relatively decent uh, condition. So, uh, all right, back of the cabinet here. Let's open this sucker up and see what's going on. You saw a little bit of this uh, when I was loading up on the truck, kind of what we got inside, but I want to try applying power and seeing if. Uh, Anything's working. Okay. While I had the, I was moving the, the cabinet around, I did replace the, or I attempted to replace the uh, leg levelers in the bottom of the cabinet as all of them had the sort of uh, round plate at the bottom broken off. However, one of them was completely rusted to the T-nut holding in place. So I'm going to have to get a new one from Ace Hardware. So yeah, the cabinet is a little bit wobbly right now because it's only on, it's on three, <laughs> three leg levelers. Um, let me see if I can point some light over here. All right, so there we go. There is our, inside of our kangaroo. Um, like I said, we have the Matsushita uh, 202, or TM, right? TM 202G um, monitor, yeah, which is, Pretty poorly regarded amongst uh, <laughs> arcade enthusiasts. Um, like it doesn't even have like a normal sync uh, connector. So uh, I'm hoping that the video cables here are correct. And uh, yeah, I really, I don't understand this. I don't think this is gonna work. Uh, our RG being ground on this, but then the sync is on a separate connector. And if I put it on here, it covers everything up. So I don't know what that's what that's going to be like. Uh, AR2 down here. Here's the two part or two edge connectors for the uh, Kangaroo PCB. We got the transformer assembly at the bottom. Here's a bag of goodies that I found at the bottom of the cabinet before, including the uh, the joystick ball top. Let's start pulling this stuff out. Okay, yeah, we do have a, uh, a grounded three plug connector. So again, I'm hoping this has been modified for US voltage instead of the original 230. Not ready to plug it in just yet though. Um, let's see if we can kind of get this stuff out of the way. Get a better look at what we're dealing with. Okay, I double checked the uh, manual and the, uh, the yellow jumper wires here on the transformer assembly mean that this is correct for uh, 120 voltage. The blue and the brown that are sort of included here are for, I think, uh, 220 and, and 240. So it's good that that's plugged in there. Um, so yeah, I think we've got the monitor disconnected. Obviously the PCB is not in here. So I think, I think we're potentially ready to, uh, uh, 
<laughs> see if we've got uh, any signs of life from this thing and uh, hopefully uh, the correct voltage coming off of the AR2. So put our multimeter right there. Uh, hopefully you can see it. Maybe that'll be better. We'll put our black lead on ground, which is right here. And we'll put our red lead on the top leg of C1. And we're set to DC volts. I'm going to plug the power cord in. Hopefully nothing pops or blows up. Um, I'm sure it's got the uh, original bottle cap transistor on there, but we're just testing right now. And the uh, power switch must have been already on. Um, why is it still very slowly bleeding off? So I can hear it on. I can hear the transformer humming just a little bit. And we've got 5.175 volts, which is good. Um, but when I turn it off, now we're off. It's still reading. <laughs> it's just super slowly coming down. What if I unplug it? Is that like a ground issue? No. Is that normal? Is that normal for it to, there we go, now it drops off. Still super slowly. I'm not entirely sure uh, what to make of that. You see even now it's just running down. It's nuts. It's nuts. Right, let's check the uh, uh, 10 point, is it like 10.6 unregulated? 14, that's okay, I'm not worried about that. And uh, over here we've got another voltage test point, 22. And that's, that's a little high, but I think that's also an unregulated voltage. So I don't feel too bad about that let me just double check the fuses down here i probably should have done that to start but uh multimeter to continuity and let's see good 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 whoops sorry about that uh cool so all the all the fuses test good. Do I dare plug in the monitor? Should we try doing that? Uh, I don't even know if my <laughs> TPG has a like connector that'll work for this thing. Um, so strange. Oh, well, maybe. Yeah, I think my TPG will work for this. But it's like a, it needs a composite negative. So let me actually do a little bit of research first before I fire it up. All right, I think I figured out how to hook up the TPG to this monitor. It needs, it requires uh, negative composite sync. So I think I've got the settings right. Before I power on the monitor, I just want to double check that the uh, the harness is sending correct voltages uh, to it. So I've got my multimeter plugged into the uh, monitor power connector and it's coming up a little bit high, 127.5 or so. Uh, but that's kind of normal. Um, we've talked about that in a previous video, how, you know, uh, line voltages in, you know, how uh, U.S. households are typically a little bit higher than they were uh, back in the 80s because a lot of the you know, uh, power in the 80s was really built in the, the 50s and you know, not necessarily up to the uh, kind of nationwide standards we have today. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and plug in the monitor power, which is right here. Okay, that's connected, and we have a ground. 
I really like how that's so close to the um, when I actually do uh, let me grab a alligator clips for this all right I've connected uh, the uh, ground from the chassis or from the uh, harness to the chassis just with this alligator clip so I think we're ready to apply power and uh, see what happens here we go three two one whoa okay uh, <laughs> Uh, I saw a spark from around the neck uh, and then a ton of neck glow and I don't think that's good. Um, the neck board loose. Let me try it one more time. Did you see that spark? It was like right there. <laughs> Let me put you, put the camera right here so you can see everything as it happens. Let's try it again. Three, two, one. Do you see that neck low? I don't think I've ever seen neck low that strong before. Oh, okay, we've got uh, something on the screen. Some kind of raster. Let's come around over here. Whoa, here we go. We've got something at least. Uh, there is a, let me just get this out of the way for now. It's nonsense going on here. It's waving back and forth. Uh, and, uh, we got a left to right wave, lots of weird stuff going on. There's some, it almost looks like water. <laughs> Let me turn on the TPG and man, that neck low is so strong. Okay. Well, uh, this is not unexpected. All kinds of weird uh, sync issues always with these monitors. Let me see if I can adjust the sync or the hold back here without shocking myself. Uh, vertical hold. Oh, here we go. Where is all this stuff? It's brightness, horizontal position. Vertical hold is like way in the back, isn't it? But hey, this monitor is kind of working. Let's try vertical hold. Yeah, I gotta get Dell's <laughs> monitor mirror set up. Let's see if I can put this somewhere. It's actually a nice bright picture. that work? Yeah. Okay. Vertical hold is right there. All right. I just swept through the whole range of the vertical hold pot. And where is the, that's vertical size. This is just such a bizarre an absolutely bizarre chassis. Uh, I'll show this to you at some point. It's like half the thing, like more than half of the, the chassis is unpopulated. It's got at least two, uh, it's got at least three little weird daughter boards. Um, Okay, so this is weird. <laughs> There's a switch back here that says uh, service switch, maybe. And when I go from S to N, like if I'm N, it was starting on N, and when I go to S, I get collapse. Okay, uh, I'm still not finding any kind of uh, 
horizontal hold <laughs> pot. Let me um, let me do a tiny bit more research and see if I can figure out what to do here. Well, I left it on while I was turning it off, and watch when I turn it off, you'll briefly see the TPG image displayed. <laughs> what a weird monitor! All right, let me do some research. All right, for the life of me, I could not figure out how to get the uh, TPG to lock uh, sync. Um, tried a bunch of different settings and nothing seemed to work. So I'm going to try plugging in the board. So I plugged in the video signal from the harness uh, into the monitor, but it doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, we've got uh, red, green, blue, and uh, ground right uh, going in here. Um, but we don't have sync, and sync is on this connector here, but there's not really a place to plug it in. So I <laughs> might have to try a different monitor or make some sort of harness modification. I have no idea. I've got the board uh, in over here. It's plugged into the harness. Uh, it doesn't want to fit on the PCB holders. Uh, so I had to loosen this thing up and slide it up and wedge it in. I don't know if um, they use different uh, spacers or something in the Irish uh, PCB stack versus the uh, US built one. But uh, anyway, I want to fire this up and uh, at least see if we can get some kind of image on the screen that tells us whether or not the PCB is working. Because like I said, I bought this completely untested and uh, I'm curious to see what it does. So let's get set up here on the tripod. Get a nice view of the monitor and see if anything happens. When we power it up, here we go, three, two, one. All right, the cabinet is on, net glow. And uh, that looks like uh, kangaroo. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I can see kangaroo playing, but we just don't have good sync. And I think it's because there's no sync signal going anywhere um, and I don't even know like what I could possibly do to connect sync uh, is there like a I mean, that, that's the whole range I'm going through the V sync vertical sync pot you know, I haven't capped this, obviously. I haven't looked for cold solder, so there could be issues with the chassis. That is clearly kangaroo playing on the monitor. Yeah, that's, yeah, there's really no good place for it. I wonder if uh, with jumper wires I can get something going. Um, I don't even know if I can grab in here. Yeah, I got nothing, nothing doing in terms of sync. So I got a bunch more research to do. I should probably, you know, go through and do some kind of maintenance to this monitor. Uh, let's try, how would I even coin it up? <laughs> Like that's clearly, those are clearly, you can see that, right? That's clearly kangaroo playing. Um, here's our coin door. Uh, let me look at uh, plugging in these credit switches to try to get some kind of ability to uh, credit up. So give me a second. Okay, the, uh, I couldn't connect the coin door with the uh, credit switches, the coin switches, because uh, the harness is missing. The coin door harness is missing, so I'll have to uh, build one of those, I think. Uh, so what I did was I pulled the PCB out, uh, turned the uh, dip switch settings to free play, and uh, I still can't figure out how to get this monitor to sync. But I'm hoping if I press a start button, uh, we will get kangaroo playing uh, uh, at least on the speaker. So let's try it. One, two, three. All right. <laughs> 
Speaker's working. Start button's working. Uh, I think we've got a working PCB. I can hit the punch buttons and make the, uh, the punch sound go, the sound effect. And yeah, you, I can tell by the colors and how they're moving. Um, the PCB is obviously playing, right? We've got the, uh, we've got the sounds going, but um, yeah, I'm gonna have to do some research, really dig into this uh, and figure out what's going on with the sink. Oh, and the uh, marquee light is out. I don't think I have a replacement uh, for exactly that size, but um, so what have we learned? Uh, the monitor works, but I can't get it to sync. I can't even necessarily, I don't even know for sure that I'm hooking up the, six, the sync signal properly because this Matsushita monitor, which has uh, another nickname that I won't repeat on such a uh, family friendly channel such as this one. Uh, we know the monitor works, but uh, not quite all the way. Uh, really, really exciting. The game PCB is working, right? Uh, it could have graphical issues. I don't know for sure, right? Uh, I haven't done all the uh, the tests and everything to determine uh, if everything is working uh, on the PCB, but it's playing, it boots, it plays, it starts a game, uh, it makes sounds, uh, uh, <laughs> it plays music, it, it makes sound when I hit the, the punch button. So uh, yeah, I, I'm hopeful that this uh, game PCB is just working all the way and I got it for uh, like nothing, like 40 bucks, I think. But um, yeah, uh, we'll have to figure out what's going on with this monitor and what's going on with the sink. There's uh, my handy dandy monitor adjustment clip-on mirror from uh, Dell from Delusionals Arcade uh, gave that to me. But uh, yeah, so this should be relatively easy. What do we need to do? Uh, we'll figure out the monitor situation. Sh situation. We'll rebuild that joystick uh, for the control panel. We'll get the coin, do coin door uh, put back together and wired back up. Um, you know, a little bit of cosmetic work. And obviously the biggest thing is figuring out what to do with this uh, glass, right? So like I mentioned earlier, and I, maybe I'll even show a picture here, uh, the Irish version of the kangaroo cabinet had one large piece of glass uh, that was basically acted as both the uh, marquee up at the top, uh, illuminated by the marquee light, and the bezel with artwork uh, around the monitor. Uh, a couple of other Irish, uh, Atari Irish uh, cabinet games were like this. I think Gravatar and Dig Dug, for example. Um, but nobody is currently reproducing this. Now, Arcade Art Shop in the UK uh, does reproduce like the Gravatar and Dig Dug uh, ones, but they don't have an art file uh, for uh, Kangaroo. So I'm hoping that uh, you know by getting this video out, somebody out there is either sitting on a a piece of glass that they'd be willing to sell to me, uh, the, the glass for this um, for this cabinet, or at least has an original one in decent enough condition and would be willing to scan it to have that artwork reproduced. Because uh, like I said, Arcade Art Shop in the UK already prints that style of glass, already reproduces that glass, just not in this particular game because there is not a high-res scan of that artwork. So hopefully somebody out there, like I said, either has that uh, an, a spare one of those uh, pieces of glass uh, that they'd be willing to sell to me or would be willing to scan an original uh, in, you know, from their collection to get it reproduced. And I'd be happy to pay them for, uh, make it worth their while to get them to scan that uh, if they have one of those uh, on hand. Anyway, I think I'm gonna wrap up the video here. So uh, I think we <laughs> made more progress uh, in this video than I thought we would. I figured this, everything would be dead. The PCB would be dead. The monitor would be completely dead power situation, but we're, uh, we're a little bit ahead of the game here. So just want to take a moment to thank uh, everyone for watching, all the, the subscribers, everyone who likes these videos. Uh, that's a great way to tell YouTube to recommend this type of video to uh, people who are like you. It really helps get the word out and helps, uh, helps me spread, uh, <laughs> spread awareness of Overtime Arcade across the internet. Uh, also, you know, comments, everything, just great. And in particular, to all the awesome Overtime Arcade uh, channel members. I think we're up to nine now. We're having a ton of fun in the members only Discord. Uh, we've done a members only live stream already. Uh, they get early access to all new videos. They're seeing this at least on Saturday, maybe even late Friday if I can get it done in time, uh, this video here. But um, yeah, if you wanna learn more about uh, the exclusive channel membership perks, uh, the perks that are available only to channel members, click on that join button down below basically you throw me $1.99 a month and you get access to all those awesome things 
uh, and uh, you get to support the channel at the same time. So anyway, I'll wrap it up here. Uh, as always, I'm Charlie. Thanks for watching Overtime Arcade, and I'll see you next time. Oh, 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 overtime! <laughs>